you start to develop a flow and then someone in the band and it it, it might be me makes a mistake you have to start all over again usually it's not me but these days i've been experimenting with some things you know so that i'm i'm willing to make more mistakes but <clears throat> uh it's it's a drag to have you know traveled all the way to jupiter and then to have missed by five inches you get to the very end and someone broke dakota like oh man you know maybe maybe it was me that blew that you know and and what did the saxophonist dean rubicek say he said uh when it, when it came to getting a, a, a great performance, even though there may have been a few mishaps along the way, he said, because good, honest music, right? And, and, and in a sense, that's true. And it takes some of the pressure off. You realize that you're just, you're creating art. And those are the famous Keith Jarrett records at the Deerhurst with uh, Jack, Gary Peacock, and they, They'd get lost and have to find their way back. It was part of the magic. They're famous for <clears throat> so. Deerhead in, right? Deerhead in. I believe so. Yeah. Not dear, not Deerhurst Lodge up in Huntsville. That's a different place. <laughs> um, even though Shania Twain used to sing there, I don't know if you know that, right? Oh, Interesting. Yeah. We all have to start somewhere. Um, shout out to Muskoka in Canada. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So you were you were you did a takedown. Yeah, I did the takedown as was prescribed, and and you were reading some of the bullet points, and they were uh, you very nicely organized. I can already see that you just played for a, min a minute before we got going, and it, I can see that I think it's made a had a positive effect. Absolutely. Right, so you're making, you go ahead and talk about just a few of the bullet points. Okay, well, no, it was, the, the process itself was, um, was very enlightening and it gave me an opportunity to get inside like your thinking process as an educator and it gave me an insight into how you deconstruct certain things and, you know, observe certain problems that the student may be having and ways of tackling that so anyway what i did was the first thing the first thing that i i i commented on i sort of labeled it as number one compound stroke number two because that was the um the movement that they were working on and then i put a call in general considerations because these were these were specific things that you were talking about in relation to the technique and how to execute the, the stroke and one of the things that you mentioned was this technique is not about the strokes themselves but how we play the strokes okay. one other salient thing that you mentioned remember the stick is the instrument let the stick breathe you don't want to choke the stick and another 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 striking point was the rebound should always be available I was one of the church you mentioned that was a Richard Martinez uh, idea. When playing wrist turns, the energy is emanating from the three finger grip. Next point, we are applying force via a wrist turn to the lever arm that rocks over the fulcrum, which is a three finger grip. And, and, and this was another salient point. A relaxed three finger grip results in the sticks having a higher pitch. So in essence, what you, you know, driving at or communicating was this whole idea of, which brings me to this, this next point. Um, when playing the strokes, those are my words, but then you, 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 you followed it with this idea. We are trying to maintain the tone of the instrument, the instrument being the drumstick. It leads us to the grip, you were talking about how the, the, the grip between thumb and forefinger should be firm, comfortable, and constant, not overly tight, but consistent. And, and, and you spoke about, I remember you spoke about the equal pressure. 
between the thumb and the forefinger. Um, pressure between the first finger and thumb, there is an equal pressure. The forefinger has a pressure towards the stick that is similar to the thumb's pressure towards the stick. Okay, that, that's really good. That's really good. And, and uh, <clears throat> well, here, let's, let's talk about the very last point. Let's, let's discuss that. Just, just go ahead and do this. Yeah. Now, now do this. Yeah, see? Maintain this. Maintain that pressure. Tight. Dick Wilson would mock teachers that talked about this being a fulcrum muscle. Oh, right. Henry Adler, yeah. Henry Adler described that as. And okay, I should be careful with, with all of that stuff, but but he didn't like that idea. Uh, he, it, uh, this this muscle shouldn't be flexing. If I recall, he, he told he explained to me this muscle. Go ahead and squeeze the first finger and thumb together, and then and then release the pressure. You feel the muscle bulge? Yeah, it, it bulges a little bit. I, I... And so he would say he wouldn't didn't want to see that muscle bulging if it's firm comfortable and constant it just stays in one particular flexation exactly okay so you remain main, so you're just maintaining that just maintaining that yeah right? and and if, and if we grab the stick in the back which is which is akin to what i believe is more like a, a molar thing see yeah. and, and and again, there's no right or wrong way to play. Just different approaches. You'll find that there'll be certain levels of efficiency gained or loss. And as well, you'll notice certain realities. So that one technique, if I would imagine, if you were to put the back fingers on and play from the back of the hand, first of all, that's going to create a really wide fulcrum, right? Because he. No matter how, this is a Richard Martinez thing, no matter how how you hold the stick, if you can get it to rebound at all, there's a fulcrum somewhere. Okay, so if you're holding the stick essentially with the idea of the stick being held in the back of the hand, you it 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 it's going to sound different than, yeah, I can hear the, here, listen to the pitch. My, I don't know if it's perceptible by a Skype, but don't, don't play. Listen. This, and then you have this. There's this, I can hear it. Uh, uh, uh. Right? So that's why we're like scientists, you know, examining the experimenter who is ourselves, right? And so, uh, cool. So you're beginning to make observations and make your own discoveries based on what you're seeing and what you're writing down and contemplating. See, here's a takedown on Murray Spivak that I did, right? Nice. It goes on for a while, you know. It, it just keeps going. Keeps, you know, Murray, Murray, yeah. There's more <laughs> upstrokes. There's a, here's a takedown on a Murray lesson. Okay, so anyway, that, that's what that is. And so that, that's, it's cool that you're doing that, right? <clears throat> it really does, it, 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 it really does provide kind of level of awareness that you don't get just by watching it. And you're actually, right? Because it's, what's amazing is how quickly uh, something that you thought you'd never forget disappears. Yeah, true. It can happen. And, and so taking notes, 
it is always a good idea. Uh, all right, so. Yeah. <clears throat> we were looking at the compound stroke number two. I think we're somewhere, if I recall, 50, 54. 50, yeah, 52, 52 beats per minute. Uh, okay, so you have it out in front of you? Yes, I do. Okay, so that you can look at it as you play. Now, remember, we, we <clears throat> you know, there are ways in this technique that we can play different strokes. Okay. We can make a motion and not necessarily have to, that doesn't always mean that it's going to be an accent. We can learn how to make motions and not accent. Uh, we could make little throws, therefore and create a kind of emotion that in some, sometimes you'll and it also creates a kind of relaxation because every time you go up there's a relaxation right and and so uh and as well we <clears throat> you, you were having kind of difficulty recognizing that there is an actual very sort of very straightforward way of standing this technique and you would play the stroke and it would be like, right, you're doing something like that. So I said, well, playing the first iteration, I, I wanted you to raise at a, a certain height in one hand and the other, the other hand might not raise it, right? And, and you're going to get, and you'll get that, right? So it's, and it's not always about how fast you play it. Okay, so let's play that stroke for me while you're looking at it, because it's very important to look at what you're playing. And let me hear it, a tempo. Go ahead and play it for me. We'll take a look. Can you back? A little bit, I'd like to see just a little more of your pad. Yeah. So um, I'll just go one way with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you start start off playing and, and do this, leading with your because the, the arms do move, but when you start off leading with your leading with your elbow and doing that, that that gives you something, but it's Probably not helpful. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to lead with the arms, which is what this is doing. It doesn't mean that we're restricting the arms. It just means that we're not leading with them. Okay. Okay. bad but and you've been practicing and thinking about it <clears throat> now let's see ah you're so used to doing it that way i just thought of something while i was waiting for you to call me back isn't that all that's happening And in this case, see, I'm, I'm turning for all of them at about the same height. We could go, we could, but for now, for this, let's just do, do it this way. Can you do that? Isn't that the mo actual essential motion? It's, 
Yeah, because I was I was trying to maintain the maybe three inches in the right hand, and then the two, two, two and a half, you said, on the left for the positura. So. That's what I just said, so stay with me now. Right, but for this, I'm, I just want you to play what I just played with no with no rebounds. So I just went like this. They're all about the same height. And then there's a... Not bad, but I think the weakest uh, <clears throat> link in the chain is is your throw, right? I really am using the three finger grip. Oh, head of the double. Uh, but that 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 that. Okay. Okay. Now, three finger grip. That doesn't mean that I have to hold the other fingers away means that I can just let them come in and be along the side, even if they're touching or, right? But it's the, the fulcrum is, is that of a three finger grip, a narrow fulcrum, okay? Okay, so, so I'm, I'm making a throw, but. I did the double again. You see, my mind was thinking about the throw and I forgot not to play a double. moves, but I'm not moving it. Not the way, not in the way that you think I am. Okay, so just do this. Da, 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 da. Stay with me now. We're, we're doing this dance, right? But da, 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 da. This is as much about, imagine if you were being conducted. It's Simon Rattle. Not that I perhaps have the right to. It's Simon Rattle, okay? And he's he's asking you, he's asking the old, entire orchestra. I just, I want to hear this part of it. Well, that's all he wants. And you keep playing the whole thing. Oh, You're not really listening to me. You do that again. Now don't lose the height of turn. Once we you decide on it, I'm up and about here. Uh, 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 uh. Just just up to about here. Right? Remember? This is a cool, this is a cool thing. I worked on that. Yeah. This is a Richard Martinez thing. Okay. And then and then it falls into the hand. That's our second position. Then you have this position where you start to feel more of the weight of the stick. And therefore, you also feel the stick laying in the fulcrum to, uh, it, it, so that it, it becomes more easily identifiable. And then, and then so we're here, then we're this, then we're this, this, so this, this, then it gets there. I can really feel it in the middle finger and, the, and on the first finger and thumb. And then, and then it would come down maybe to here. That would be maybe the so one, two, three, four, four, and then the fifth iteration would be from parallel. So perhaps there are five iterations. They could be divided into probably thousands of iterations, right? Depending on how tiny each motion was. Okay, so when you're going to come up, where are we going to? Some somewhere around that that second iter or one, two. Three, the fourth iteration, somewhere around there, right? That seemed to help you, the idea of thinking about height of turn. Okay, so it's that, 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 that. Ah, I did the double again. Sorry. So, ah, 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 
No. Show me how the first turn is going to be in your left. No, you're starting left, right? Right. Show me how high it's going to turn. No, that's your right. So you said you wanted them all at the same height, each stroke at the same height. So just come back to parallel. You show me the height of turn in your left for the first left. There, okay. Well, then that's how high you're going to have to turn. That's not what you were doing. They're all going to be about that high, right? Go ahead and do play that. Okay, now where's the throw? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the throw. Good. See, you're turning now. You're starting to turn your wrists. Do that again. That doesn't mean we have to turn high to turn our wrists, but it's helpful to actually challenge ourselves so that we can know whether we're actually turning our wrists or not. Can you go ahead again. And remember, that doesn't that doesn't mean that we slam either, does it? So that's, we have to work on your throw. We don't have to, but I think we should. Right. Just let's look at the throw. Take a quick look at the throw. We're moving around a fixed point in the universe. Okay. Thank you, Richard Martinez. Or how about Richard Wilson? Kevin, when you go up, you don't bring the bead up before you, you leave it down. I used to have this on video, I think it's gone. You leave the bead down and, and then it comes up. I said, what do you mean you leave it down and then it comes up? He goes, you leave the bead down on the, <laughs> he wasn't happy necessarily with that. You leave the bead down on the way up and you leave it there and you don't bring the bead away as you're, as you're going up. You leave it down on the way up and then you bring the bead up, meaning as, as, you're, as you're reversing the direction of going from up to down, See, now the forearm is going to start to come down. The minute the bead comes up, the forearm, the elbow, the whole construct, you're going to get, you're going to have all of that weight available behind what you're doing here by leaving the bead down. You're going to have all that weight available to come crashing to the earth. And, and Dick loved the fact that you, you got all that power for free. See? So you're, you're coming up and then you leave the bead down as you go up and then you bring the bead up. I, and, and, and he would talk about the torque. That's what I just felt, so I'll mention it. You're going up. You leave that bead down. Let your arm hang loosely. Come straight up. Don't twist to the side. That was my old terrible habit. You come up. Three finger grip. The fingers are just hanging out, right? You're restricting your arm. You're not really coming up. You're like this. You're like this. Yeah. Ah, let your arm hang by your side. Better. Just let your arm hang by your side. Then. They come back to parallel. Here, let's try this. Dick, I, didn't I do this with you? Dick, Dick Wilson would grab you, grab the stick. Yeah. He'd grab the stick and hold hold the stick so that the bead stayed down on the way up, and then he'd take you up. Huh? Not sure. That doesn't. Something looks suspicious here. All right. So if we if we if we. Literally, if we just do this, this is what Dick would do. You'd do this and you'd follow it. Yeah, you do that. 
Okay, so we're just we're just gonna yeah we're gonna do that from with our left hand and we're just gonna have our three finger grip holding the stick, and 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 we're gonna follow that. Better, yeah. There you go. That's better. Okay. How else would you follow it? You see, you can't follow that if you hold your elbow by your side and go up. It, it can't go up any more than this. Not really. Go on. Keep your elbow by your side. That's about all it can go up. Um, because it starts to get tight and then what happens to go up higher? You start pulling the bead towards yourself. Go on up higher. Go on, get it up there. Yep. See how the bead wants to come towards you? Doesn't it? For me to get, get up to this height and not have everything tighten up. Yeah, it pulls the bead toward, it pulls the bead towards you. My bead's above the pad, very close to the pad. I'm feeling a tiny, small, small, minuscule amount of tension in there. Small. Like it doesn't feel uncomfortable at all. Even when I come up even more, I can still keep the bead down. I'm feeling a little bit more tension, but it's not, it's not unbearable. Yeah, well, I'm not feeling that. What happens is because the arm reacts as it should, if it if you leave it alone, it compensates. So to avoid that tension. See, it's just hanging. There's, there's no more tension here than here, really. And the elbow and the, up, the forearm, the upper arm, the shoulders just hanging. I've got a bit of space in between my arm and the side of my body because I've activated the upward motion of the forearm and naturally the elbow is going to come out. Now go ahead and push on your elbow a little bit. <clears throat> From the outside in, like this. Yeah, see, mine, mine doesn't want to move. Watch. It, it doesn't want to come in. It's, it's relaxed, but it's there. I mean, you'd have to take you take considerable force to, to push it in. It's not out. It's still like this. Come on, let it hang here. But I'm saying that it, it seems counterintuitive, right? It's hanging and yet you can't push it in. It's it's actually come out. It's like this construct. Kind of. Come back down. Now go on up around a fixed point in the universe and leave the bead right there. You see my elbows moving more than these. Come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Further, come up. Leave the bead down. There you, there you go. Stay, stay. There you go. Ah, finally I got this to this react. Now watch. Go ahead and try pushing it down. See, it doesn't really want to go down, does it? No, it, it's almost creating a plane of, of resistance. You could you could put your cocktail right here. Good. You could rust something up on there for sure. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Like you could rust you could rust the stick. It'll roll off eventually, but it almost creates a plane for sure. Right. But we haven't got there by leading with the elbow. Okay. We've got this, and now the whole thing is just by letting there. See, it's not this. It's not this. Yes, exactly. It's not. Uh, 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 you, had to, you fixed it though, and I'll let that collapse. Okay, now let's take a look at the Murray Spivak throw. See, that's the Dick Wilson throw. They're the same, really, in terms of the way the arm is, in, this, in terms of the general aspects of how the arm is reacting to the, the wrist. So we can go up like Dick, right? That to me that okay. it's over and over and over and over. See this none of this is tight. None of this is tight. But watch. You can't push against it. Good. Ah. Right? But it's not tight. That's how it works. Now with Murray, so we're doing a we're doing a we're taking this in a 
in, in a particular direction because I think this is important because your throw, it's just, it's going to hang you up. It, it, it's uh, going to uh, impede your, your, your progress. So, so let, let's, let's take a look at Murray now. From what I understand, you know, I studied with him and when I was a younger guy and I've watched him teaching, teaching Louie and he goes through it uh, motion by motion, point by point. So he has Louis, I think he has Louis make a tap, but we don't have to tap. We go, this, we're just going to, so he, what he, he says here, you're going to make a tap and you follow it up. So we won't make a tap, we'll just follow it up. Or he says, you, how does he say it? He start, starts, I think, but see, I have the takedown. I could read it. <laughs> Maybe I need to read it again. But, but no, but I, I, I think, well, uh, what, what I, I, I know to be accurate is, talks about, you're so close to the surface, you can't help but make a note. You see, you're just going to make a tap. And you're so close to the surface, as you go up, you can't help but make a note. OK, so now we're here. And, and then he has Louis Belson. He has Louis Belson cock his wrist. Right? And he's not quite. Uh, perpendicular to the floor. It's at a little bit of an angle. And he says, now the butt ends come away from the palm. And, Mar and Louis went up so slowly that he has to physically, because it wasn't the momentum to bring it away from the wall. He moves it away from the palm a little bit to demonstrate uh, what Sid Murray was describing. Okay. And then, and then he says, now if you want even more power, you're going to cock your wrist again. And he has Louis somewhere back here. And he goes, I need to plug in. Oh, shoot. Sorry, sorry, Murray. We're only in a minute. Hold on, So I'll continue to demonstrate. You'll have this to look at or watch later. And, uh, and, um, I've been trying to, I'm padding here, Joe. Okay. So we have, we have the, Richard Wilson going up. He's hit thrown eight on the way up. And then, and then he cocks his wrist. We never quite got to the idea of cork. Somehow we ended up talking about, I finally had to get you up to here and what we did, but it didn't, we, it wasn't necessary. Okay, so we have this feedback throw. And what he does is he's got Louis Belson going up. Then he says, then you follow it up. Then you, if you want more power, you can cock your wrist again. And suddenly the stick is behind Louis' shoulder. And, and you can see that there, he's come away from the palm even more. And, and he says, and then you can pull with your middle finger to add even more thrust if you want. Go and try it. Yeah, but see, your, your arm is like, you're like, you were like this. You see, that's not it. Just, just like, just like this isn't this. Right, remember this? Okay, so now what, what, what happens is you, 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 you get, you get. Don't see? And there, I'm pulling with my finger too. See, this is, isn't it? It seems different. It seems different than, than, but, but is it? Here's Dick. And there's. Murray gets to hear sooner. He, but see, my elbow is still out. Don't you see? It's not this. Look, what, look how the elbow moves. Can you hear it do this? Can you hear it whipping? Listen. Can you hear it? Don't play. Listen. Yeah, I can hear it. See? 
That's what we're that's what we're going for. Okay, so show me the Murray Spivak. See if you can get the Murray Spivak. He goes up. He goes up sooner. <clears throat> Dick Wilson would go up and follow it up in this direction longer. Murray, I don't want to. Murray didn't like the goose snap idea. Okay. But if you're doing it right, the, I think that guys who studied with Dick would come back to Murray or go to Murray and they'd show up trying to get that position, but they'd be holding their arm tight and Murray would call this a gooseneck. Th this isn't a gooseneck. I don't, I don't believe. You can call it, I mean, it's, the, it's kind of funny, right? It's the gooseneck. No, it's not. It's the prey mantis. I know it anywhere. No, it's a puppet on a string. No, it's not a puppet. It's like God, drummers. Okay, so what we need to do is we're not going to get up to here. We're going to get to, there's there's the break of the wrist, you see? And then Marie gets to here real soon. How come your elbow comes forward? Yeah, see, your elbow does, is doing something like this, watch. Hold on, your elbow is doing something like this. Mine doesn't watch, it looks like this. Check it out. It looks like this. It's under the stick, I can feel it. Now you have this construct. Oh, and by the way, yeah, it does, you don't want to push, it doesn't really want to come in. See my elbows, I'm out. Dick. Dick's elbow would be out. Murray's elbow is out, but it's different, isn't it? He's got to this position and he's got there sooner. See, see how, don't move. You're like, so don't move. Stay with me. You're, I'm really, I'm on your side. I'm not trying to, to bust you to, I'm actually trying to help you understand Murray. You're like this. You're over by your feet. It sticks right up by your head. I'm out here somewhere. Look where I am. Yeah, I know. How do you get there? Okay, let's break it down real quick, and then we're going to keep moving. So we, we have this little bed, just like this. Immediately, my elbow reacts. Yours doesn't. I don't know why. Mine, mine does that. Tiny, yeah, like more like that. Yeah, come out just the tiniest bit, right to the side. It goes out to the side, tiniest bit. Maybe it feels like it's moving forward ever so slightly. In reality, I think that elbow is really ultimately. If I had these conversations with Dick, be careful. This is a subtlety that it doesn't. It's not worth breaking down right now. But but the but we're not going forward. We're it it just it just goes. Tiny little break in the wrist, and the elbow immediately starts to go out. Tiny bit, watch. There. Look, look at it. There. See? It's moving in concert with my wrist. No, your, your, your elbow's starting out by your side. Your elbow's not by your side. So it has nowhere there. Let it drop. I know it's painstaking, isn't it? But once you feel this, you won't have to go around breaking it down. It'll be built in. It's, it's a very natural motion, but it takes a minute to get. I'll give you that. Okay. Okay. You didn't want to drop your hand, arm, but okay. It's by your side. Now, if you bend just that much, it goes up. Nope. Your elbow just stayed in and went forward. I don't think it went out. Remember. Remember. Watch. watch. Remember. It's ultimately going to be up here. It, look, it's all one thing, watch. So if I'm asking for half of that, it would go to here. If I, well, stay with me. If I'm asking for half of that, it would go to here. See, it's always, it's, it's a, it, they're like cogs. Everything is moving with each other. It doesn't stay here and go like this, and this doesn't move, or this moves in a funny way and breaks yeah. the machine down. Show me where it's gonna go. Show me where it would ultimately go if you go up as high as we did earlier. 
Remember your armrest? Remember that you're going to, your, your it's a cocktail. Don't do it with your elbow. Try it again and see if you can get to here. Around this fixed point. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Because I feel like you get to here, then the wrist stops bending, and you just lift your elbow to get it. it, it the, it's the wrist that's going to be leading it. All the watch, all the, I'm bending, 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 bending. Are you bent? There you go. Stop. That's where it's got to go now. Come down. Come down this way. Come down this way. Then go back up. Bending, 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 bending. Elbow's only going to go out if you're bending. Okay, stop. Come down. Okay, come on down. Stay with there. It's good. Nice and smooth. Now we're just going to bend and bend and bend only half that much. Yep, stop. Come down. Come down. There you go. Bend, bend, bend. Same thing. Bend, bend, bend. Come on. Elbows. What happened to the elbow? Come down. Come on. It's fine now. It didn't want to go at first. It got stuck. Bending, bending, bend. Okay, good. Come down. Okay. Now we're going to uh, bend, bend, bend half that much. Stop, stop. Don't start. Don't leave. Move your elbow if you're not bending. Come down. The elbow comes in as you undo your bend. Bend just a little. Just right there. Stop, stop, stop. Don't do. Don't give me. Don't give me extra elbow. Thank you. Okay. Back down. Come on. Now we're going to do even half that much. You know where it's got to go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No. Yep, it didn't didn't follow. Didn't really go up. It's not. Come on, bend and and allow the arm freedom. There you go. Stop, 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 stop. There you go. Got no one in a bound there. Okay, good. Now, now you're Murray. You've gone up. No, Dick Wilson, don't do it. Stay with me now. Don't do it though. But Dick would go up further. Not Murray. He'd go to here and then. Now he's gonna see. So your elbows kind of out, right? A little bit. Yeah. Now, with me and now you're gonna cock your wrist all the way up to come on let it come back back here behind your shoulder elbows up this is my huh but look the elbow comes out more come on try it again so the elbow comes out a tiny bit like we just were come on no elbow didn't come out come on come on up OK, there you go. Now watch my elbow. I'm going to cock my wrist. My elbow is going to go out more and follow the, because the uh, forearm is following it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Ta -da, you got it. Let that stick dangle. Give it, just give it free so the middle finger can pull. You can come down without pulling, by the way, but we're going to even do that. We're going to even throw in the Murray's feedback, extra thrust, pull with the middle finger and just come down. You know, all that, all that weight, not this much weight, because now you don't have the weight of the upper arm. Now you have the weight of, look, all of this weight. Now this is up, everything's up, so it has somewhere to fall. Here, you're, this has much less distance to fall, and so does this. You can pretend to put the stick back, okay? but, but now we're really here. You've got all this to go. Clunk. Does that look better, Kevin? Better. Yeah. There. Okay. That's a, 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 the yeah. one. That, that's the uh, the uh, dissertation on speed back throw vis-a-vis -vis the Wilson throw. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was good. Now, how do we incorporate that into this trick? <laughs> Well, I don't know because when I was, I don't know. So, uh, well, that was a rhetorical question. Let me. Okay. In other words, can you? I, I was asking you to go, but da 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 da. Oh, I did it again. I want to keep everything as a single. But da 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 da. See? Da. Ah, there it is. See? The Ella. The elbows come out. I, I'm, I'm thinking more Dick Wilson. I think it's more efficient. But at this height, who knows whether it's Murray or because we're not coming up that. So now who, 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 who is it? 
you know, this is a blend, a slight blend. So anyway, so I'm coming up, but I see all the pieces are still there. The elbows come out, right? And now I'm going to clock my wrist and look. Remember all that weight? This is up higher. The upper arm has room to watch. The upper arm has, because it's come out, even though it's tiny, it has room to fall. So you're getting the weight of this. If you hold it by, you never get the weight of your upper arm. It doesn't become involved in the stroke. And now you're shoving with your bicep and, and the whole thing's a bust. So. Can we go from. But seems simple, doesn't it? But da 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 ba da 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 ba da. Try you try. No metronome. Dead with your elbow. A little better. Remember. It's, it's going to go up to, we're calling it the coffee table, the coffee table position. That's mine. You know, I'm the coffee table position guy. I, I'll, I get it. No, the, the, okay, just stay with me, right? So you're coming up to that position, but remember what you learned. To get to that position, the wrist cannot stop bending or pronating, and the elbow continues. Look, I'm going to go up. No. This has to bend the wrist all the way up as the elbow moves. There you go. Now just that. cock your wrist to eat nice and easy. Get the other side of the throat. Go on. Let when that body collapse. It all collapses, doesn't it? All that weight is there. Do it again. And this time, play play this. Up, 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 elbow. Your, boy, your wrist is really up high, and that elbow has them. See, they're not in sync yet. You're getting it. Okay. Kind of. Okay, now you're going to make it and all that weight comes down, doesn't it? Okay, so now play that little exercise I created. No, no. Remember what Simon Rattle is working on. The orchestra has to remember just the second half. Do it again. Okay, here's something that you're doing that, that is hanging you up, I believe. And then we're going to keep going. Yeah, watch when you go up, this is what you're doing. See, when we practiced, you didn't do it, but as soon as you put the, tried to put it into practicum, it fell apart. And here's one of the reasons. When we practiced making a throw, the bead stayed in one position. You left it down, or it was in a fixed point on the way up, right? Check it out. Stay with me. It was here. When you watch this back, you'll see that when you're playing your stroke, you, you, you're going. See if I can copy it. It, it. it dips down and it's like wait, it goes up waiting down here. I don't know why. It does this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. It's not. Watch where mine waits. Ah, 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 You go up around a fixed point. You don't dip it down. Try it again. Don't lose your height there. Regular wrist turn. Dip it down. It's almost touching when you go up. All you're doing is moving around that position. There's the bead as you go up. Don't let it dip like that. It'll ruin it. It wasn't touching. It wasn't touching the pad then. You go the last note you play weights down at the surface. So what do you want me to do there? You want you want you want that to be like a constant flow? Just play. Just go ahead and play one note for me in your right. Just to wrist turn. No, no, come on, turn at the height that you've been turning. Okay, is that your floor? 
is it a half, a half an inch or awfully close to the surface now? Well, just give me a half an inch, just up a little higher. Just, just, yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. That's your floor. Let's just say. I play one wrist turn and come back to there. See? Up, oh, you're lower. You lost your floor in the right already. That's where it comes back to. Do it again. Oh, now you're turning higher. You've changed the experiment. Don't let it dip. Come on, show me where the floor is in the right. We're just working on the right. Show me the floor. Bring it up just a little, just for, for this exercise. Come on, both of them. Give, remember it was a half an inch to an inch speed to butt end? You can start the floor anywhere you want, really, but you always have to come back to it. Like, so to say it's there. Good. Now make one wrist turn in the right and come back to there. Don't go lower. Come on, keep those beads up at the floor. Stop dipping them. That's where you're going to turn in your right and come back to that place. There. Now I want you to turn your right. Go back to that place. Go on. Go on up and make a throw. From there. Yeah, see the bead dip. He didn't dip down. That's how you should think of it right now. No, you have to make a stroke first. And come to the floor. So you want me? You want me to play a wrist turn and then an accent? Yeah. Do it so slow that you you can you can do it even slower, like you just did for fun. It doesn't even have to be an upstroke. Who cares? Like this wants to dip down. Look, you're lower than you were before. You, you just can't maintain half an inch. Make it an inch. Challenge yourself. Already, it is an inch. Well, make it higher then. Okay, there you go. Try it somewhere in there. Uh, just a little lower. Just a little. No, too low. And by the way, making it lower doesn't mean you just turn your, your beads down. See, that might be part of the problem. If you're going to make this make the, the floor lower, you don't just do this. You have to bring everything down. It's got it. it the, the floor is like the forearm. The stick is an extension of the forearm. The forearm has to be at the floor. You don't just do this and say, well, now I'm lower. No, if you want to go lower, the whole construct is lower. If you want to be higher, the whole construct is higher. All right, somewhere around there. Now make what wrist turn, come back to there, and then go up from there. And then go on up. Okay. Yeah, don't go up right away. Eight? No, no, wait. You're just... Teach yourself. Just go like this, wait, and then make a throw. Okay, now go up around. You didn't really go up around it. You, you, you did, that was really murky. You went, whoa, I'm just going to go. Come on, go around it. You make a turn, you're at the floor, you're going to go up and throw. Go up, leave the elbow alone, try it again. There you go, make a tap. Go up, leave the elbow alone around that spot, and make a throw. There. Now go da 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 da. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna make one more. I'm gonna say one more thing because I see drummers out there, and I should send it to you. The pianist Sergey. Thank you, Sergey. Sergey Kazimov, because. He's fascinated by Murray Spivak. I've been showing him, and he plays he plays some some drums, you know. And uh, so I've been hipping him, and he's been doing some googling of Murray on his own. And so he sent me something based on what a, how a pianist learns how not to get tight. Right? And and I'll send it to you. But the, the pianist whose name is coming to me, Peter. He's say like, I couldn't I couldn't play these passages, the, uh, these octave these octave passages, and I couldn't play it, and I would just get they scared me to death when I was first coming up, and I he studied with master teachers, and they, so he passed this information on, and he has his own way of doing it, but he said, it, you see what he does is he, he said he snaps his wrists up, I I, I wouldn't talk about that, but he turns his wrists up. He says, and then he lets all the weight drop on the piano. Turns it up. 
No. See? And here's what he got into as well. He talked about the curling of the fingers, but he didn't, he didn't discuss it perhaps as I might as a drummer. And maybe the two instruments are a little different or, but see what's happening? If, 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 I, if, I, uh, if I turn up, the forearm countervails for what we're doing here. See, it seems to want to, if anything, go down, doesn't it? You don't counter bills, and then he says, and you drop all that weight, you drop all that weight onto the keys of the piano. You lift it up a little like that, turn your wrist up, up, and then see all that weight? And now, you're, now your fingers have curled towards your palm. See, the fingers have reacted from the wrist. They pull towards the palm a little, and the forearm may have gone down after so slightly. And then everything's going to reverse as you let it, let it release onto the piano. Uh, come on, just let that release. There, see your fingers came uh, uh, elongated and, if, and, the, and the forearm countervailed back to where it started. Boom. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. And what happens is if you're making a mistake, like I did, forever, right? You don't come in with these bad habits. And you're, pump, you're pumping your arms at all, even ever so slightly, thinking you're not. I'm not pumping my arms. I'm not. Yeah, you are. Because you're not. You're not getting. You're not getting this. You're getting. You're getting some version of this. And now, because you're doing this all the time, and you're not just actually purely turning. Now, now you, now you, you don't have access to this. You got no throw either. I don't know how. Now I'm going to throw. How do you how do you go from this? I guess you could. Boy. Now you're just now you're doing this and you're trying to make a motion. It's not that. If anything, the arm is moving backwards from what you think. It's not pumping up and down. As I turn up, it's going down and then it comes up. It's the exact opposite of pumping your arm, which is a mistake that so many guys make. And so you don't have, and then you don't have, you don't have access. And I have, I wonder if maybe part of what's happening is, right, you are actually, maybe pump, if you're pumping your arm and you want to do this. How are you going to do that? Okay, everything's tight. And that's what this guy is showing because I can do this for hours and not get tight. Pump your arm. Some other technique, I guess it, it can work for certain things, but how do you eliminate the tightness? How could you keep pumping your arm going for an entire symphony? That's what he's, I think he said, I could go an entire, the length of an entire symphonic composition, I could keep doing this. So let's just take a quick look at stick control and then we'll, we'll wrap it up <clears throat> real quick. No, no, this is good. No, I needed to, I needed some refresher on the up and down stroke because I feel like I hadn't been focusing in on it in the last couple of weeks, although it was part of the compound stroke, but it was still, it's always good to kind of go back and do some remedial work on it and get back to that place of relaxation and just setting it up correctly and executing it correctly. Your, pa your patience is your benefit. Exactly. It's a lifetime of work. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to work on the compound stroke. Without the rebounds, without. Yeah. We're just, I'm just wanting you to get this motion because once you get the motion. Uh, turning what is a single that would be Potentially an appoggiatura into an appoggiatura isn't a big deal. But right now we're just going to keep it simple. Let's let's take a look at stick control, and 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 just connect some of what you've just experienced to what it is you're working on. Okay, control seventy two a half note. OK, 
Okay, number one. start to come out, it's not in a position to make a throw. It's already starting to come out. It doesn't need to come out. It's just by your side. So that, watch, so that you can make a throw. And I don't, I don't even play. So, uh, probably should I need, I need a country gig when I'm playing a lot of cross stick and I have to go to this. Yeah. Okay. We're, we want we want the arm by the side so it can so it can re react it's by the side and then when you bend forward for your throw it'll come away if it's already out you're it's over okay but that's good you know you're gonna he's, he's, the more and more you get this you're already pretty fast you know I see that and I've seen you in some videos pretty fast but how are you doing it are you pulling with your fingers? Are you getting tight? Are you making throws like right? So we're just refining the speed that already exists. Exactly. Okay, so now let's move on to number three. All right. Really, a lot of concentration on this three finger grip. Finger and thumb, comfortable and constant, and then the, and then the middle finger. That's your, which is now um, here. Here, see, there's always fulcrum potential. You see, watch the, there's fulcrum potential, but I'm not using it yet. It's just a wrist turn. Now, as a double, now I'm actually using the of the surface to send the stick back up and rock over that three finger narrow fulcrum. Now that fulcrum potential has been manifested. Doubles. A single. Okay, so. for each pound to watch. So you're not, don't fool yourself into thinking you're playing a double when you're turning your wrist close. The wrists are just turn, 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 double, 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 turn, turn, double, 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 double. Okay, look at the parallel, right? Now, parallel, if you look at it in the wide brain, we're not up to that stroke yet. It actually has an absent, right? 
So here appears here's the paradigm at half speed. Yeah, it's an up, isn't it? There's a down and then the up, and which is in the left, up and followed by a double. If the speed is so slow, it might be two wrist turns. As the speed comes up, it might just turn into that rebound double we've been talking about. Remember, there's fulcrum potential. So we have The arms are still doing what they're supposed to be. It is still a throw. There's an up to a throw. There's a rebound. There's a three finger. It's all there. So if we're going to play this at tempo 72, let's take a quick look. Remember what you read to me at the beginning? It's not about playing the rudiment. It's about how are we playing the rudiment. OK, so go ahead and play the paradiddle at half speed. Come on, go for it. I'm not making it. Be you go up. Okay, we're ready. Here we go. Ah, 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 um, come on, join me. Up double, up double, up double, up double. but your throws suck. Yeah. You didn't keep your throw. But, and here's the other thing. Finally, at the end, when you d double what it is really in stick control at 72 to a half note, uh, that's when you finally started rebounding. You see, remember rebounds can, rebounds can be more difficult when they're slower. Yeah, so yeah. if we're, ah, watch. Somewhere around here, right? Uh, uh, here, you see, my doubles are on the wrist. Up, yeah. even though it's slow. Up, up, wrist. Up, wrist. Up. Remember, there's a throw. Ah, uh, there's a throw too on the up. Ah, uh, now, now. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, this is this is in tempo. See, at this point, see, I'm getting rebounds. Still getting rebounds. Okay. Okay. So there is the actual proof. You're going to want to play the the, the uh, uh, paradiddles and, and the inversion and the inversions with a bit of a throw. It's not quite an accent. I don't mind if you want to make a motion though, and and it definitely it's got to be a dot. Because we, we want the upstroke to the throw. And what I want you to do is play them half speed relative to what is the actual speed. Half note equal in 72. And you're going to play that at half speed, looking for all those pieces. And when you think you've got them, then you can go into the actual tempo. OK? All right. Kevin, when you're at half speed, those 
those double strokes are going to be two wrist turns then, or should they be rebounded? That's not what I said. Hey, now you're the king of takedown, so you can go back. Yeah, exactly. And uh, solidify it for yourself. Exactly. By examining this lesson on that has been filmed. Yes. All right, Joe. I can't. I'm looking forward to your next takedown. I think that was really helpful. Okay. Okay. And uh, as always, very good job. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Welcome. I'll see you. See you in a minute.